All right, so a lot of people have been asking me why I never made a video about this. This is my little backup power wall that I have at home. And the reasons why I never made a video are no longer present. And so I figured why not make a video about it? Let me show it to you first. Here we go. This hasn't been opened up in a while because this has been working. And so as you can see here, this is based, what are these hoverboard batteries, right? And it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 of them. So there's 12 of those. It's about one and a half kilowatt hours worth of them or something like that. But I used to have another cabinet out here and it had more of them. And there were some that were exposed here. If you remember back in the day, I've since removed all those so that I can try different ways of making uh, uh, power walls. But this one here, it's actually working. It's been working for years. And this is what is known as a line interactive, I think. And what that means is that this system's always on and there's pros and cons to that, right? And we can talk about those in a different video. But for now, basically this is a UPS, a non-interruptible uh, power supply that I've taken out of the, its main enclosure and then I was able to fit it in here and it, it wasn't that hard I mean the design allows for it because it's long and oh, the only thing I had to do was extend the cables to this main transformer here right so all these batteries were not available by the time that I built this so I didn't want to make that video but th since then that has changed and now these batteries are available Right? And so why not just go and show you the images of me making this thing? All right, so it all started with the hoverboard batteries. If you weren't around at that time, then you might remember that about 75,000 of these things became available through Tom, right? And so I got a few samples early in the day and I was testing them here. I am testing to see if I could parallel them and I can push, you know, charge them fast and discharge them fast. And they all pass the test. Yeah, you can do about 10 amps, you know, probably like five, 10 amps continuous on each one of these, of these packs. So then I decided to then go ahead and try to build a small power wall using them. From the very beginning, the tendency for most DIY power wall builders is to make an exposed battery pack right and i get it i get it you put a lot of time into this building this battery pack you want to be able to see it you want to be able to show it off and stuff but for some reason from the very beginning to me it made more sense to put them in boxes and that's why i started doing in boxes but for this one i thought hmm can i just build something simple that would be attractive to people and would allow them to kind of make a simple with a limited amount of parts and stuff and yeah sure enough i discovered that by using these things called standards which are made to go on cabinets to put shelves you could use zip ties and you can just zip tie them right into the wall right and so it makes for a very clean and minimalist system uh that is cheap but and also simple to build so there you go just like that i built a 30 pack power wall right and this each pack is about 200 watt hours times 30 that is about six kilowatt hours worth of energy at 36 volts so that is the challenge. Most equipment it typically comes in 12 volts, 24 volts, or 48 volts. And the 36 volts, there's minimal amount of equipment available. And so I had to search and search until I finally found a UPS that was about 15 kb right so i think it's like 1.3 kilowatt and it's wired for three 12 volt batteries in series which is 36 volts so that meant that it was compatible with our hoverboard batteries and so that's the ups unit that i decided to use first i had to take it apart and then take the guts out and then put them inside this box and like I said, uh, it's pretty simple. Apart from the five, four or five cables that are on the main transformer, you have to extend them a little bit. You also have to extend a couple of the little sensor cables and then just solder an XT90 connector to the main battery cables. And then after that, you just put together the batteries to the standards that you then screw to the bottom 
uh, or the back wall of this box. After that, the box is ready to just be screwed up into the wall. Oh yeah, one last thing is uh, back then I didn't have the PCB board for the power strip, right? And so this is what I did. This is the first edition, first version of that. And then now we have a PCB board that you could use to do this step. But it works the same way and it's just less work to do the, the new way with the PCB. But after that, you just connect everything in there, put it up on the wall and let's go. Uh, make sure you have uh, good anchors on the wall because this box is going to be a bit heavy and so you, you do a good job anchoring to the wall, you don't want it to fall. After that you just put the last few remaining battery packs that you have left off because then you have to need access to put the bolts to the back. And then after that you connect everything and you're ready to go. You have a backup power wall that works on 36 volt batteries where there is these hoverboard ones or some of the new ones that are from scooters. Any of the 10S 36 volts will work with this unit and you can put, you also have another cable that is for an auxiliary out battery and that is what i use to connect the 30 that were next door that were right next to it so there you go that's a super quick easy minimalist way to build a power wall right using stuff that you can buy off the shelf that you can buy so you i have links to all of these products to make this one product now they're all available and so if you need to build this thing, go for it. That's just one of the many ways that you can create a power wall. And that is one that is kind of proven. I've been using it for a long time now. Like I said, years. I think I built this like in 2016, 17 or something. It's, we're in 2020 now. So at least three years has been on use. And so no complaints. It was money well invested in this one little project. All right. I hope this helps someone out there build their all first DIY power wall. Uh, if you do, make sure you comment down below, send us pictures, join my DI, JU's DIY Powerwalls group on Facebook, and then you can share with us there the pictures and your process and your, and your progress and your questions or whatever, you know, it's just a community of DIY Powerwall builders out there. Okay. See you guys on the next video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. Make sure you like this video. It helps the video a lot in the channel. Other than that, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. All right, how about that lighting, huh? Nice. Finally, he was able to bring the Samba and get it out of his my garage. That's where I had it abandoned and I couldn't work on it because there's not enough room in there. But now that I got my shop here, well, that one uh, probably is going to be the very first one to go on a future lift that I'm going to put here. And then we're going to start installing the battery, Tesla Model 3 batteries, right? These guys. And then, um, yeah, it's gonna get a full air ride suspension uh, with airbags and the whole deal, right? So this one right here is gonna become an awesome car in the near future.